how to set up a ring group. All right, ring groups, we go into call features and ring groups. A ring group allows a set of phones to ring, either simultaneously or in order, have music on hold or ringing in the background, um, and then dumps to a, a destination of your choosing. We're going to call this in group one. By default, it picks in the extension range of 6400s, so we're going to leave that. We're going to tell it that, well, let's look at our diagram here. Ring group one is going to ring 1200 to 1210 and then go to voicemail. So 1200, hold down shift. Oh, it didn't work. I got to check them individually. Now, if you had a, another uh, grand stream phone connected with a peer trunk, the uh, extensions of the other system would show up on here too, and you could put those in that ring group and you could ring across systems. That's all possible. The ring strategy, you can ring in order. Most commonly, I ring simultaneously. Everything rings together. Music on hold. This is what the person calling in will hear while the phones are ringing. Now, the, the thing to make note here is that the phone system answers the call the moment it starts playing this. So if you have something that requires, um, requires you to not answer the call because you don't want to charge them a toll charge or something like that, don't set this to anything. Leave it the way it is. If uh, you're using SIP trunks and the amount of calls doesn't matter, I usually set this to default ring back time. This lets them hear ringing back as soon as uh, the phones start ringing. And it warns you if music on hold is set not set to none, an inbound route via an analog trunk may incur costs because that inbound trunk answers it the moment it starts playing the ring back. Custom prompt, oh, I forget. Ring to announce to a caller. I forget which one it announces to. It's a, it's a message to the caller, which is the person calling in, I believe. And lets them know what's going on. I rarely use it. Um, there are some custom reasons to use it. We're not going to go over here. Ring timeout, this is usually about 20 seconds. You know, four or five rings, sometimes it's 30 seconds. You can set this to auto record. It will record every call then that passes through this ring group. Uh, this is new. Toggle support for calling configured. Interesting. We won't worry about that for now. Um, replace display name. If you check this box, the caller ID name that appears on your phone will be replaced with this name up here. Um, if you need that, that's helpful sometimes. And then at the end, after all is said and done, it rings all of those phones simultaneously playing a ring back tone for 20 seconds. And if nobody picks up, you go to voicemail is what we decided of 1200. And voila, we have ourselves a ring group. We're going to make a second ring group. I'm going to go a little faster on this one. Ring group two, 1250, 1260, and ends at IVR1. But I haven't created IVRs yet. So what do I do? Ring group 2, 1250 to 60. 1, 2, 3, 9, all those in there, and 60. We're going to ring simultaneously. Uh, we're going to do ring back. We're going to go do it for 20 seconds. And we're ending at an IVR. But I don't have that IVR made yet, so I can't put that in here, which means I'm going to have to come back to this. And this is where our diagram helps us out because it reminds us to do so much stuff. So 
So after I've created my IVRs, I'm going to come back here and change the destination to have that IVR as one of the options. Now, I could have made my IVRs first, but my IVRs also point to ring groups. So it's six of one, half dozen of the other. You have to pick which one you do first. Either way, you've got to go back and change something.